How's everything going with your thesis? I should be able to publish it next month. <sighs> A few days ago, I was worried that I'd have to stop my work on it. Thankfully, that didn't come to pass. Well, Azar was one of your thesis advisors. Honestly, I was afraid that you might have gotten dragged down as well. How did things get settled? The newly appointed Acting Grand Sage reviewed all of our projects and gave us permission to continue our research. Acting Grand Sage? That sounds like a new thing. Yeah, I heard that selecting new sages has been taking some time, so he's just filling in. But it's all thanks to him that our research results weren't jeopardized. Once my paper is published, I'm definitely giving myself a long vacation and getting some much-needed rest. Mondstadt sounds like a good idea. They're really out of their minds, making I'll hate them the acting Grand Sage. Take it easy, Professor. I'm puzzled as well. Just going by qualifications, you're one of our most preeminent scholars. I don't know why they picked a stripling like him. Fool! Do you think I'm angry because I wasn't chosen for the position? No! It's because I don't understand why they chose him! He was one of my students, but he rarely attended class. When I asked him about it, he retorted that self-study was better use of his time. What brazen arrogance! Misery of miseries! For the Academia to have him as the acting Grand Sage? <laughs> <coughs> Professor, don't get so worked up. I'll go get you some water. Psst! Wanna hear a secret? I've heard the new acting Grand Sage is from Haravatat. Really? Who is it? Someone named Alhatham. Never met him myself, but he's a real hot topic right now. Lots of things being said about him. Hard to tell what's true and what isn't, though. There's also a Vahumana scholar who's been in the spotlight recently. They say that he's a likely pick to be one of the next sages. Oh, is he teaching any courses? Maybe we should drop by. Wow, news of Alhatham being the acting Grand Sage sure spread fast. Some people don't know who he is, though. Guess he's less famous than Paimon Dodd. Some people are saying good things, and others bad. Especially that old guy just now. He really doesn't like all Haytham. Uh... Hey! Are you okay? Uh, you don't look too good. The Matra. The Matra? I'm Ilias. I have to talk to Amatra about something important. In the state you're in? You shouldn't push yourself. Why don't you tell us what happened and we'll pass on your message to Amatra? No, I have to tell them myself. They are the only ones I could trust. Sorry, can you lend me your arm? This is an important matter. Failure is not an option. Since you put it that way, fine, we'll take you to Amatra. We promised to take him to Amatra, but we don't know that many, do we? Oh, wait, Sino should be back at the Academia! Let's go find him! Quick, follow! But is Sino at the Academia? You two look familiar. Are you friends of Mahamatra Sino? Um, I'm afraid he's out on a mission right now. But if you'd like, I can pass whatever message you might have on to him. We ran into this guy by the gates, and he seems really eager to speak with Amatra. It sounds like something urgent. Oh? If you don't mind, why don't you tell me about it first? Siraj. Siraj. That name sounds familiar. Isn't he a Vahumana researcher? Vahumana researcher? 
Yes, one of their most renowned, in fact. I hear he's as daring as he is intelligent. There are rumors he'll become Vahumana's next sage. Uh, but please continue, good sir. What about Siraj? I want to report him for conducting a dangerous experiment. He kidnapped me, tied me up, and took me to that horrible cave. Experimental equipment everywhere. I ran as fast as I could, a little slower, and he would have caught me. There's no rush. Please, take your time. What kind of experiments was he conducting? Where is this cave? I don't remember. Huh? You can't remember? All I remember is Siraj walking towards me, and then my head started feeling... weird. It's like a nightmare that I can't recall. I just know that that place is dangerous, and that they must be stopped. Oh, I heard they conduct business in the tavern. We have to hurry. Even if what you say is... <sighs> All right. I'll have some of my colleagues look into Siraj. But before that, I would like to administer the Matra lie detector test. You think I'm lying? Please don't take it the wrong way. This is just standard protocol. Sorry, but can you two wait out here a little while? We'll be back soon. Huh? A haven? Let me bring you up to speed. First things first, Ilyas passed the lie detector test. This indicates that what he said is highly credible. As such, we've decided to launch an investigation based on the leads he provided. Per protocol, this matter was reported to acting Grand Sage Alhatham. After hearing about it, he left a message for Mahamatra Sino and then asked to join the investigation. Huh. It's kind of weird for you to be working with the Matra. Is there a special reason? You're overthinking things. My interest was piqued, is all. Really? I'm unsurprised you have this much free time. In that case, let's join in as well, shall we, Traveler? It's already against protocol for Acting Grand Sage Alhatham to participate in this investigation. As for you two... Oh, never mind. After all, you were the ones who brought Ilyas here. I'll allow you to accompany us, but you have to promise to keep everything confidential. Don't you worry. Our lips are sealed. All right, in that case, I'll fill you in on what we know so far. Ilyas claimed that Siraj will be conducting some business with a Kasharawa researcher at the tavern. This is one of his few clear memories. It seems he stumbled upon this information while escaping. Incidentally, Siraj isn't at the academia right now. He applied for long-term off-site research one month ago. It's close to the time that Ilyas had given. So we've decided to head to the tavern and investigate any suspicious persons. That's right. Arav, prepare to head out. You two, do as you will. Oh, come on! We already said that we're coming! We're here, Acting Grand Sage Alhatham. What's our next course of action? Hmm. Acting Grand Sage Alhatham? Looks like you haven't read any memos lately. The new Academia Decree clearly states that even a sage doesn't have the authority to interfere with the Matra's actions during an ongoing investigation. If your superior were here, he wouldn't be asking me what to do. Instead, he'd be telling me to stay out of the way. You're right. Understood. Then please wait here as we lock down the perimeter and search for suspicious persons. Ilyas, please stay here. Acting Grand Sage Alhatham, I'll have to trouble you with the protection of our primary witness. <sighs> sure. Though I'd rather he just protect himself. <sighs> You're the same as ever. Casually ignoring people just like you did back at Aru Village. Answering a simplistic question only enables the questioner. Besides, I need him to understand my position clearly. Arav has just as many doubts about my coming along as you do. But unlike you two, 
He's making this matter more complicated than it is, with his considerations like the acting Grand Sage is trying to seize the Matra's powers. That question was obviously bait. The Matra were once under the influence of the Sages, and so were often subject to these bureaucratic traps. The test was strictly unnecessary, though. I hope that our exchange will assure him that I won't interfere with their work this time. Ugh, why is this so complicated? This is why I was against becoming the Acting Grand Sage from the very first. Titles and rank inevitably make a lot of things more troublesome than usual. Excuse me, Acting Grand Sage Alhatham. I've had a question on my mind, and I need to know the answer no matter what. Have we met before? No. I have no recollection of ever meeting you. Ha <laughs> ha! I thought so too. <clears throat> I probably wouldn't have had anything to do with someone of your caliber. Then why did you ask? Well, for some reason I felt a sense of familiarity when I met you for the first time. Really? A misperception, perhaps. Or... Acting Grand Sage Alhatham? We've apprehended a suspect. Siraj? No, it's the Kasharawa researcher who has dealings with him. His name is Narendra. S uh, acting Sage Alhatham? Wait, uh, can someone please explain what's going on? I admit that I, I did steal some mechanical components from the lab and sell them, but does something like that really warrant the personal interest of the acting Grand Sage? Wh what have I got myself into? I, I, I know I let Greg get the best of me, but, but, but please, I promise that this won't ever happen again. I would like to ask him a few questions. Of course. Do you know Suraj? Yeah, that's the name of my buyer. He asked to make the transaction at the tavern, but he never showed up. What were the details of this transaction? He's doing some kind of experiment that seems to require many power generators and electrical components that can only be found in our project. He contacted me in private and said that he'd pay a large sum of Mora if I was willing to put some aside for him, under the pretense of them being defective parts. We had originally agreed to meet at the tavern earlier today to do the trade. I sure didn't expect to get stood up, or run into you all. Perhaps Siraj was aware that Ilyas might leak information, so he intentionally didn't show up. Whatever the case, it seems that this lead ends here. The good news is, regardless of what Siraj was planning, his progress will now be severely hindered by a lack of power generators and electrical components. We still have time to conduct our investigation. Do you have any more questions for the suspect? No, he's all yours. But I'd like to borrow Ilyas for a while. Oh, that's fine. We conducted a comprehensive lie detection exam, which showed that he has a genuine case of amnesia. We're not planning to pursue any further breakthroughs on that front. However, I am curious. What do you need him for, exactly? I've read some papers regarding amnesia, and I'd like to try restoring his memories. I see. We'll be returning to the Academia, then. I'll leave Ilyas in your care. Follow me. Siraj didn't show up at the tavern, and Narendra didn't give us any leads! Ugh, that means we're stuck. Oh, Haytham, are you serious about seeing things through? Paimon's pretty surprised that you're this interested in the case. I thought you would have guessed the reason by now. Huh? Uh, Paimon has no clue. Hey, do you know? Yes, we were classmates. Come along when Arav briefed you on the situation. So you're not here because you're interested in the case itself, but because you know the suspect? You couldn't be further from the truth, but I wasn't expecting much from you to begin with. For the time being, all you need to know is that we were once classmates, 
I became the scribe afterwards while he continued his academic endeavors. He submitted a thesis one year ago, and the Grand Sage at the time asked for my opinion. I did not approve of it because it committed one of the six cardinal sins by touching upon human evolution. From violating matters regarding human evolution to attempting the forbidden and fearing none, the six cardinal sins are the origin of all evil in this world. They are also what the sages use as a reference when formulating or amending the rules of the academia. My opinion was that Suraj's research was both overly naive and in violation of various core principles. The Grand Sage took some of my suggestions on board and ultimately decided to reject the application. So that's why he's buying energy sources and electrical components. He's most likely trying to circumvent the rules and conduct his experiment in secret. That sounds super suspicious. Oh, we gotta stop him! Ilias, can you try to remember things again? Maybe something new will pop up. I'm sorry, but I've already tried many times. And no matter how hard I try, it feels like everything in my mind is shrouded in a thick mist. It is possible for a person to subconsciously forget some of their memories as a defense mechanism against extreme stress. However, these memories aren't truly lost, but merely sealed away. They can be restored with the appropriate stimulus. Now, try to recall things you care about. They don't need to be related to this case. Well, actually, I feel like I've forgotten more than just the memories of the time I was kidnapped and experimented on. The kind of person I am, the things I've done... I can remember some things, but I can't recall some others no matter how hard I try. But I do vaguely remember that there are two things that I have to do no matter what. Do tell. The first is to get my paycheck from the Academia and give it to my younger sister in Gondarvaville. I'm not sure about the details, but it seems that I would send money to my younger sister every month to pay for family expenses. I can't remember. Sorry, there's just so much I can't recall. Not unexpected. However, you're the only one who has seen Siraj and knows the exact location of his cave at present. As such, we'll do everything we can to help you regain your memories. Losing your memories must be really painful. But don't you worry, we'll help you get them all back. Oh, thank you so much. This feeling, it's more than just pain. I don't know how to describe it. I have so few memories that I don't even have a clear idea of who I am. And my head's always ringing. It feels like I could faint at any moment. But amidst all that, it also feels like I've been set free somehow. Nevertheless, I have you all to thank for bringing me what clarity I do have right now. Now, I do remember that I worked part-time at a place in the academia called the Research Preparation Center. That's also where I got my monthly paycheck. I see. In that case, let's go and find whoever's in charge there. Oh, um, uh, Acting Grand Sage Alhatham. I've sent this period's research expenses report to your office. Have you taken a look? Are there any issues with it? I did. Recent research expenses have decreased quite a bit compared to past figures. Yes, though that is primarily because there are fewer scholars with research needs. But that can be a rather... convoluted topic. Might I ask why you are here today? I believe you know this individual. His name is Ilyas. He worked part-time here, and he's here for his paycheck. Oh, yes, of course. Though... Uh, Ilyas... Where have you been these past few days? That was our busy period, but then you disappeared without a word. Everyone had to pick up the slack. I'm sorry, something unexpected came up. But I know I've caused trouble for everyone. Is there anything I can do to make up for it? The other researchers have more or less finished your share of the work. However, there is one thing that is yet to be settled. Do you remember Chandra? You were in charge of following up on his off-site research application. He retracted his application a few days ago and cancelled his off-site project. 
He's the 12th person to retract a research application this month. I'd like you to ask him why he did that. Hmm, Chandra is probably having coffee at this hour, so you can find him at the cafe. Understood. Then, about my paycheck. I'll pay you in full once you return. However, make sure you don't disappear without saying anything again. Be considerate to your colleagues and give them some forewarning at least. Is this acceptable, acting Grand Sage Alhatham? I have no objections. Elias? Long time no see. What can I do for you? I heard that you cancelled your research project, so I'm just here to ask you why. Oh, that. Um, it's really nothing special. I, I just don't feel like going anymore. I'm, I'm not the only one who cancelled, right? I mean, people have had no motivation to conduct research lately, haven't they? No motivation to conduct research? Yeah. Say, who might you be? You look sort of familiar. No, um, don't mind me. Please, continue. Well, with the downfall of the Sages not long ago, many of the projects that they led were put on hold while they were being investigated. With the situation being so volatile, people are picking up random things to do to kill time. No one wants to risk starting any new research until it's clear how things will pan out in the future. When you say, how things will pan out, you actually mean what the new sages would have interest in, right? Wow, talk about blunt. But that isn't the only reason for the lack of motivation to start new research. So what are the other reasons? Well, because the Akasha Terminal shut down. I'm sure you're all aware that we require all kinds of knowledge to perform any of the research we do. Back then, the Akasha would respond to any of our requests for the knowledge we needed. It was beyond convenient. We didn't have to spend an extended amount of time studying, so we were able to immediately run various tests and experiments. I see. You get it, right? After having had a taste of something so amazing, who can be bothered to manually sift through data and files ever again? There are only a handful of people at the academia who are starting new projects or performing research. Most people are like me, waiting for a recognized researcher to start a project before immediately applying to join. Although our names will be further down in the paper, we'll have a much easier time. We don't have to do most of the mental heavy lifting. All we have to do is focus on our assigned tasks. Elias? What's wrong? My head... It hurts! I remember now. I remember what Siraj said to me as he approached. You will become Siraj number 36. Fuse yourself with a consciousness under my control. Think only in accordance with a set module, like a worker bee in a beehive. Pyron doesn't get it. What does that even mean? It's what Siraj was researching and the topic of the thesis he had submitted. Collective consciousness and the path of evolution. Siraj believed that by achieving three objectives, he could create a collective consciousness in human society and drive humans toward their ultimate evolution. First, he would rank test subjects in descending order of ability, with number one serving as the Overmind. This Overmind would then divide tasks into numerous modules and delegate them to the collective's members based on their assigned number. Lastly, members would share their memories and emotions to facilitate the rapid exchange of information within the collective. Get it. What's the point of all that? Think of it as linking many minds together and tailoring a given mind's assigned work based on its compatibility. Eventually, everyone's minds will be consolidated into a new form of existence that is both an individual and an organization. Siraj believes this collective consciousness is superior to individual humans. Whoa! Squishing a whole bunch of people together? Paimon thinks that sounds horrible! It's just as Alhatham said. 
Siraj gave all the test subjects different numbers. Bigger numbers meant you had a lower rank, so your assigned tasks were less complex, such as being responsible for everyone's basic needs. Smaller numbers were ranked higher, so you'd be given more complex assignments like planning for the future. Siraj referred to me as number 36, and I think that was a low-ranking number. I also recall that Siraj said his plan was proceeding very quickly, and that the hive would soon be complete. Oh no, and we gotta hurry! We have to stop him before it's complete! I tried my best, but that's all I can remember. I still can't recall where the cave is. I'm really sorry. Take your time. You'll eventually remember it all. However, something doesn't seem right. Some details don't add up. What's off? You were only designated as number 36? What a shame. From what I can see, your talents merit a smaller number. I'm not sure what Siraj's numbering system is based on. Anyway, we're done here. Let's go. Please, wait. I heard you all talking about Siraj just now. Are you looking for him? Huh? Do you know something? Well, Siraj is pretty popular as of late. I heard he's gained recognition from a lot of well-known researchers. Supposedly, he's a strong contender for being one of the next stages. There are many who would give up everything to be a part of his research team. I'm nothing special though, so I doubt I'd get the opportunity. That said, I do know a researcher who received an invitation from Siraj but declined it. Her name is Janaki. If you're interested, you can try to find her. She's usually reading at the pavilion in the garden. Are you Janaki? We'd like to ask you a couple of things about Siraj. Mm. Ilyas? Do you know me? I'm sorry, but I don't recognize you. Are you playing dumb with me? No, I'm not. I actually have amnesia, so I've lost a lot of my memories. And? <laughs> are you trying to say that I should forgive you just because you've forgotten what you've done? Or are you using the acting Grand Sage as backup to settle things with me? The two biggest loners teaming up. <laughs> what a terrible thought. That's enough. There seems to be a dispute between the two of you, but I have no interest in that. I heard that Siraj once invited you to join his project. Is that true? So, what if it is? Siraj did extend an invitation to me, and I was also interested in his project. I think it was about collective consciousness or something. Anyway, he said that I could be number 45. I refused, because I thought that rank was too low. No one wants to be placed at the bottom. <laughs> Certainly not me. Elias is number 36, and Janaki was supposed to be number 45. Ugh. Just how many people did Siraj have his eyes on? Tell me, did Siraj tell you how he assigned numbers? Yeah. Remember how the sages took advantage of the Akasha and extracted Yana energy from our heads back then? They left a document that records the amount of Yana energy that the Akasha had extracted from each person. I don't know how Siraj got his hands on that document, but he used it as the basis for his numbering system. Hmm, I see. He believes that this data can be used to evaluate a person's computing power. Putting aside the validity of the data, it is meaningless to judge individuals based solely on their Nyana energy. At most, Nyana energy can only be seen as representing a portion of a person's abilities. Humans are complicated beings, so it is impossible to evaluate them using a single criterion. See? I knew I couldn't have only been ranked as 45. What else do you know about Siraj? That's it. He came to me, I refused, and that was the end of it. Is there anything else you needed? If not, I'm out of here. I've had enough of this eyesore. Please wait, I, I... I still want to know what I did in the past. You really forgot? I swear, I don't remember anything. Paimon can vouch for him. The mantra also said that he truly lost his memories. I see. You know what? It's better this way. 
I get angry just thinking about it. So I really don't have the patience to fill you in. All you need to know is that you got a lot of people in trouble back then, including me. That's all I have to say. Goodbye. And she's gone. She doesn't seem to like you very much. Do you really not remember anything? I really don't. But after she said that, I've had this heavy feeling in my chest. I guess I did something really horrible. Do you want to remember? Huh? Even though you're a witness against Siraj in this case, you've also lost your memory. No one can force you to remember if you don't want to. Even if you manage to remember, all you would need to do is feign ignorance and tell us that you tried the best you could, but to no avail. I'm not sure what to do. Like I said before, for some reason I felt a sense of freedom when I realized I had lost my memories. But I feel like I shouldn't be allowed to go free so easily. I still want to remember everything. What should I do? I can look up your file. Something that caused trouble for a lot of people in the past must be on file somewhere. Would you like me to look into it? Yes, please. All right. Then let's return to the house of Dana. We've spent enough time here, and you should go and get your paycheck. Let's split up for now. Ilyas, you go and deal with that. The rest of you, come to the archives with me. We'll meet back here later and then head over to Gandarvaville. Okay, thank you all so much. Relax, Ilyas. Being nervous accomplishes nothing. That's true. <sighs> I'm ready. No matter what I've done, I'm ready to face it. I'll also try my best to remember anything else related to Siraj. We'll put an end to all of this. I'm holding you to that. See you later. Okay. The important files from the last few years should all be here. Nothing. Anyway, I found Ilyas's file. Let's meet downstairs. What have I done? This file indicates that you were once commended by the Academia for your courage and sense of justice. You were considered a hero. Huh? Me? Yes. Your instructor was engaging in academic fraud, and you were the one who reported him. Your report was found to be true after a series of investigations, and your instructor was brought to justice by the Matra. This incident caused quite the commotion, and the Academia sent you a commendation. <laughs> what is it? Are any memories coming back to you? No, it's just... <sighs> My head feels like it's being ripped apart again. It hurts. Did I seriously do that? Then why? Let's put this matter aside for now. It isn't directly related to Siraj, so there's no need to push yourself over it. <sighs> I'm sorry. It should have been something good to hear, but my body is instinctively rejecting it. I feel like I'll black out if I try to remember. Take it slow. Recovering memories is no easy task, especially when it involves memories that you don't want to remember. Just do what you think is right. Thank you. I'm not sure how you're so calm and composed all the time, but it does make me feel more confident about the situation I'm in. Let's head to Gundarvaville 
and deliver Ilyas's paycheck to his sister. Come on! We should be close. Let me think. It should be this way. Ilyas, what are you doing back here? Dad, uh, it's nothing. I was just wondering how everyone was doing. You sure everything's okay? Did they bully you again? It's all right. You can tell us. <laughs> Ilyas, what's wrong? Uh, I'm fine. Just a minor headache. I haven't been getting much rest lately. <sighs> Back then, I told you not to be a hero. Look how things turned out. I can't imagine how things are going for you at the Academia. We've even been receiving threat letters. You don't have to force yourself to stay at the Academia. You can always come back home. I'm all right. I just need a little rest. Ilias doesn't seem like he wants them to know that he has amnesia. Hey, hey! That's enough, you two! Ilias isn't feeling well. You can keep nagging him once we get home. Ilias, let's find somewhere to talk. So, how's your headache? It's much better now. <laughs> oh, here. It's this month's paycheck. How's everything at home? Same old, same old. It's just that everyone's worried about you. Don't mind their nagging. Deep down, they know that you did the right thing. It's just that after hearing a lot of bad rumors about you and seeing all the threatening letters... Well, they're mom and dad. Maybe they just want you to... conform a bit more. Conform. Yeah. You don't remember? After the incident, you... Ilyas? What's wrong? Ah, I see. I remember now. Uh, don't worry, I remember now. You're acting a little weird today, you know? Anyway, I understand your decision. But Mom, Dad, and I just want you to be happy. I don't care if you're a hero or not. I just want you to enjoy life and relax more. Your understanding is a great comfort to him. Is it? That's good. Are you a friend of his? More so these two. My name is Alhatham, and this is the Traveler in Paimon. Oh, that rings a bell. At any rate, I feel more at ease knowing that my brother has friends. Would you like to join us for dinner? I just happened to buy some extra food. Sorry, but I still have things I need to take care of. Well, that's a shame. Okay, I'll get going then. Take care of yourself, Ilyas. Don't worry. I won't do anything to make you guys worry again. You remember now? Yes, I do. Thanks for that. You know... You don't seem like such a bad person. Is that your way of conveying gratitude? Oh, my apologies, but I meant every word. Remember when I asked at the tavern if we had ever met? I said that there was a sense of familiarity, but what I really meant was a sense of loathing. Loathing? Yeah, but having spent some time with you, I realized that you're not someone I disliked to that extent. Strange, isn't it? Why did I have those thoughts at that time? My strength is that I don't care about what others think. If you could also develop this quality, then you won't be as bothered by complicated social relationships. It'd be great if I could think like you. <laughs> uh, but first things first. I remember where Siraj's cave is now. I'll take you there. Really? That's great! Uh, Paimon remembers that you said there are two things that you had to do. We've only checked off one, right? What about the other one? Are we not gonna do that first? There are more important things at hand. We have to stop Siraj before he completes his collective consciousness, or it'll be too late. 
You're right. Let's head out! This is the place. It's so well hidden. But there's nothing spooky about it. Hmm. Let's go inside and take a look. sense him nearby. Did he get separated from us? Should we wait here or turn around and look for him? There's no need for that. Let's keep moving. Uh, all right. We'll continue in and see if he catches up to us. It's okay, Ilyas. You've done more than enough for me already. I don't understand. Everyone knows that Johnny is stealing your research. Why is no one willing to go public with the truth? He shamelessly used your thesis to send in a project application. And whenever the project hits a wall, he asks you for help. Everyone knows what's going on. Do you know how many people are working on that project? If Johnny was kicked out because of academic fraud, That'd be the end of the project. Too many people would be affected. But he's obviously taking advantage of you! He throws you the hardest work, and after you're done pulling all-nighters, he struts around with your research data and takes credit for it. That's not right! Why are you putting up with this? A lot of people warn me to not say anything, and I think they have a point. This is just how things are. All I want is to graduate without any problems. <sighs> it's okay. He's at least paying me. Half a year of your time and effort. Countless all-nighters and casual threats and insults. All for a measly 20,000 mora. He's treating people like cattle. Enough. It's fine. I just need to suck it up and get it done. Of course not. I was also able to see those memories just now. They were probably the ones that leaked out while Ilios was connecting to the Collective Consciousness. Connecting... Collective Consciousness? It's clear that this place isn't a work in progress. The Hive has long been finished. The Collective Consciousness project is already complete, and Ilios is now returning to the Collective. Not entirely. Keep walking and you'll see why. Huh. <laughs> 
one with nature. Take flight. Be still. Squall and fury. Bow your head. It's completely different from what Ilya said. This place looks like it's been done for a while. Contributing to the collective by only thinking to your strengths. How easy. Oh, Haytham. Just thinking of that name fills me with hatred. We must get rid of him. Wait. Huh? No. Uh. An entire year's worth of work down the drain. And for what? Your reputation? Do you have any idea how many people you've brought down? You could have played Hero any time. So why couldn't you have waited until the project was complete? I don't understand what you guys are saying. Are you saying you don't care that Raju jumped to his death? It's a shame. What happened to him? I, I thought he was stronger than that. Everyone has been working hard to complete the project. He could have endured for a bit longer, but he chose now of all times to... In any case, we're done with you. Because of your recklessness, the Macho are putting Johnny on trial. Oh, this project is done for. None of this affects you at all. But do you know how many people, myself included, needed this project to complete their studies? Now our futures are up in the air. If worst comes to pass, we might not be able to graduate. Do you understand now? I'm sorry. There's no need for an apology. It's not like I'll accept it anyway. You'll pay for this. Hey, you're blinking out again. What did you see this time? Don't jump to conclusions just yet. Save your words for when we see him. This is all very strange. Is there really no research group that will take you? Well, to pass this course, you must complete a paper with other researchers. I know you're a hero for fighting academic fraud, but well, we can't make exceptions for heroes, now can we? Maybe you should try to improve your relationship with the other researchers. Huh? Getting a reputation for being too unconventional will not stand you in good stead in the long run. I understand. <sighs> you seem troubled. Who are you? 
Ah, where are my manners? My name is Siraj. Siraj? I've heard of you before. Do you need something from me? Mm, the world hates people who don't fit in. I imagine you've had your fair share of trouble. After you reported Johnny for academic fraud, you are ostracized and shunned. Even your family can't understand your actions. However, I'm working on some research that will help you merge into a collective. That way, your life won't be so dolorous. How about it? Wanna have a go? What did you see? Paimon can't believe it! He really did trick us! That Giga Jerk! No, Siraj is the real Giga Jerk here! Ilias is just a regular jerk! Ooh, Paimon's so mad! We're gonna find him, and we're gonna make him explain himself! You've come. I intentionally slowed my integration into the collective consciousness because I wanted to see you one last time as Ilias. And I wanted to apologize to you as him. It was only at Gondarvaville that the second thing I must do occurred to me. Bring you all here. To throw off the Matra and bring Alhatham to the Hive. That was my task as Siraj number 36. You, you were already Siraj number 36? But you passed the Matra's lie detector test! Yes, I truly did forget many things during that time, even my identity and assigned responsibilities. However, it's not that I got scared and forgot. I chose to delete those memories. It's difficult to fool Alhatham, so I had to create the perfect guise for myself. And the best guise is when you believe your own lies. Correct. I only told you that the Hive was incomplete because I had deleted my memories of its completion. It was finished a long time ago. Before I left, I was already living as number 36. Now, I choose to return to that identity. Only here. Can I be truly free? That's all I wanted to say. After I enter this room, my consciousness will merge back into the collective. And so, this is goodbye. Is this your decision? <sighs> yeah, the person we know is Ilias, not Siraj number 36. The outside world is painful sometimes, but... Paimon doesn't think that's a reason to run away! Do you need more time to consider, Ilyas? Hey, who are- That is Siraj. So you're that Giga Jerk! Giga Jerk? Huh, how bold of you! Have I done something to offend you? You! I modified Akasha terminals to allow users to share memories and emotions. Then, I recruited researchers from the Academia to build a collective consciousness. I assigned numbers to everyone and divided the experiment's tasks amongst themselves. Here, people can live easily and happily without needing to exercise complex mental thought. This is what they have chosen. All I've done is fulfill their wishes. You're just trying to justify yourself! Then I ask you, What's the difference between here and the outside? There are researchers at the academia who engage in dangerous research in extreme environments while others become idle and listless. People are so obsessed with collective will that even those on the fringes will attempt to fit in after suffering setbacks. Isn't that right, Elias? <sighs> There's no need to deny this. 
as it is fact, it is natural for social creatures to congregate together. And the terminus of conformity is a collective consciousness through which even an ordinary bee colony can become a powerful swarm, replace the bees with humans, and this model becomes even more potent. Welcome to the hive, all Hatham. You once arrogantly denied the merits of this project before the Grand Sage. A few simple words from you, and my research was consigned to nothingness. Of course, I'm well aware that you don't care about any of this. You don't care about the pain of others. But I didn't give up. I made my thesis into reality. When we arrived, I noticed many empty rooms in the hive. Oh, you noticed that? <laughs> then can you guess where their inhabitants are? The answer is the Academia. They're executing another phase of the plan. The plan to install me as a sage. The collective consciousness links all of us into a single mind, showcasing our individual strengths as we work together. We are able to execute complex undertakings while instantaneously modifying our strategies in response to unexpected situations. Everything has been proceeding smoothly. You are our biggest obstacle. With you out of the way, I'll use my growing influence to turn the collective consciousness into a legitimate study. The project will snowball until ultimately everyone will be part of my hive. I... No. The hive will be in control. And it will lead the academia towards a new future. We won't let you do this! What can you achieve with mere words? You weren't even able to change Ilyas's mind. Return to the hive, number 36. Yes. Wait! Don't go back! Uh, look! There are lots of people out there worried about you. And you aren't an outcast! Aren't we your friends? That's easy for you to say, given that you're travelers. Will you two continue to stay at the Academia? When you leave, tragedy will repeat itself. Return, number 36. You know as well as I do that comforting words don't make life any easier. Ilias? Why? You two are just as arrogant as all hate them. You think that everyone should be like you and live according to their own truths. But you don't realize that most people simply want easy lives. I allowed number 36 to leave the hive without his memories only because I knew he would eventually return. This proves that I know more about human nature than you do. I'll hate them. Do say a word or two. I will consider them as your last. I made those words quite clear a year ago. The model you presented was extremely unstable. No amount of garish packaging will change its fragile nature. <sighs> it can't be helped. If you were clever enough to realize those problems, then you would have been aware that the hive changed when Ilias returned to this collective consciousness of yours. What? The Collective needs motivation to execute its plans, just as machinery requires energy to operate. That's why you, as the Overmind, synchronized your hatred of me into the Collective, prompting them to create and execute a plan to eliminate me. However, when Ilias returned to the Collective, his memories and emotions were shared with the rest of its members. This includes his perception of me. Thanks for that. You know, you don't seem like such a bad person. Strange, isn't it? Why did I have those thoughts at that time? This contradicts the hatred you had provided them, and these two differing emotions will give rise to new conflict. So that's it! Wait, so you knew that Ilias would return to the Hive? And then you pretended to keep him around just to fool Siraj! Wouldn't expect any less from you, all Hatham. Once the collective consciousness bugs out, we'll take that opportunity to... Uh, wait, it's 
back to normal already. All Haytham, I told you. You're too arrogant. Did you really think that your little scheme would be enough to destabilize the hive? Ilyas's return had indeed introduced abnormal emotions into the hive, but such a meager drop cannot give rise to waves. Your struggle has been in vain, and it's time to end it. Allow me to show you what makes the collective consciousness so formidable. So many monsters. Where did they come from? And something feels off about them. I also integrated monsters into the collective, though I ranked them last. Even so, they are part of it. Despite their lack of intelligence, perfect cooperation can be achieved, much like soldiers who have undergone strict training. Now then, drown in endless waves of monsters. You, you will all pay for your ceaseless arrogance. Hey, I'll hate them. Uh, your plan didn't work, so what do we do now? I've already sent my gift to the Collective. It'll take some time for the recipient to receive it. You two just need to brace yourselves for the nuisance in front of us. Well, all right. Paimon doesn't know how you get so confident, but we'll hold him off for as long as we can. <sighs> that hurts. The wind knows me. My apologies! Cascade! Oh, Haytham isn't that bad of a person. But it has to be done! He must be eliminated so that we can evolve. So rude! You see? That is the will of the Collective. Even with the hatred gone, they continue their work. An external anomaly cannot shake the collective stability. The wind knows me. My apologies. Be still. He won't hold out for much longer. He's a lot tougher than we imagined. Something's gone wrong with the team. The march. What's going on? What's with this sudden influx of information? Silence! Has the Overmind, I command you! <laughs> the wind knows me. Take flight! <laughs> How bold! Quicker! <laughs> <laughs> My apologies. How is that possible? Why hasn't it been resolved? Is there an error in your judgment? The will of the collective cannot be wrong. The Overmind must have made an error in his judgment. But Siraj is the most intelligent among us. He is number one. His judgment is the optimal one. Is that true? <sighs> what have you done? Calm down. Don't you have an easy way to figure this out? <laughs> Designated as number 36? What a shame. From what I can see, your talents merit a smaller number. Putting aside the validity of the data, it is meaningless to judge individuals based solely on their Nyana energy. What you said to Ilias has now become a memory shared by all members of the Hive. I see it now! You've channeled and amplified their selfish desires! You're trying to destroy my Hive from the inside out! Human minds are not infinitely pliable. And your hive has stretched many of them to their limit. Once your authority as Overmind starts to wane, it won't be long before your subjects snap back. 
Is it worth living here like a machine? Being a tool for the rest of my life? As soon as one person begins to have these thoughts, selfishness, doubt, and fear will propagate, thanks to the web of consciousness that you built. At this stage, your so-called hive has already fallen. It's not over yet. I am the Overmind! There has to be a way! It's too late. Once the desires of the Hive accumulate, beyond a certain threshold, they will kill their king. My numbers shouldn't be so far down the list! Thrive is a lie! This isn't what we agreed to! I should be the one in your position! Members of a collective consciousness are more likely to reach a consensus because of their shared memories and emotions. For example, Ilios did have differing perceptions, but he ultimately followed the collective consciousness's judgment. However, this system is far from perfect. Based on this logic, the collective consciousness will generate an intractable diffusion effect upon encountering negative emotions. The disturbance that Ilios caused wasn't for naught. It made the Collective question the Overmind. Setbacks in the plan further amplified doubt, which diminishes the Overmind's influence. This inevitably causes the Collective to generate negative emotions. Apprehension, disappointment, panic, avarice. These negative emotions can be very well hidden, as humans generally do not share completely transparent channels of communication. But in the Hive, where there are no secrets, Negativity can spread like a tidal wave. Of course, what I said to Ilios was the trigger for all of this. A few words were enough. Believe in the power of words, Siraj. You were already thinking of a way to destroy the collective consciousness. Even back then, you knew that Ilios was the bait all along. But how did you know? Since when? I knew it from the moment I saw him. Moreover, I never look down on you. My opinion of you has always been objective. You have a naive view towards the concepts of collective consciousness and human evolution, but you are intelligent and disciplined. You would never let a test subject escape. Mistakes like that are beneath you, and you also won't leave any mistake without a resolution. <laughs> I never thought I'd hear those words come from you. But if you're saying that out of sympathy, spare me. I know very well that you've never viewed me as an equal. When you were with us, you always had a distant look in your eyes. You don't need to hide it. I know it better than anyone else. The arrogance that comes with being a genius. Nobody likes being treated like that. Your perspective is entirely born from your habitual way of looking at things. From your perspective, you probably think I'm like you, someone who doesn't fit in. However, I've never placed myself on a pedestal. I just want to distance myself from meaningless noise and look at everything objectively. On the other hand, you have failed to come to terms with who you truly are. You care too much about winning and how others perceive you. You mean to say... I'm the arrogant one here. Is that not so? Arrogant and emotionally fragile. You view people as a simple, mediocre collective, while you regard me as one of your kind. <sighs> Regardless, I have lost. You can take me back to the Academia and stand trial. You will stand trial, yes. But arresting people isn't in my job description. I'm just an ordinary staff member. I believe it is the General Mahamatra's duty to escort you away. Sino? What are you doing here? 
I followed the symbols. Looks like things have already been settled. Symbols? I left a similar picture in my letter to him, and I made several similar symbols on the way here. Wait, what do you mean you left a letter? Oh, Paimon remembers! When Paimon first saw you, Arav said that you had left a letter for Sino. So you really did know that something was up with Ilyas from the start! Uh, you lied to us too! It'd be best if you didn't spout nonsense. I never employed any mode of trickery on you. By the way, I came across some information at the Academia a few days ago. If you practice the method discussed therein, your vision may improve. Do you need it? Seriously? This guy. By the way, Sino, Paimon heard that Siraj sent more people to the Academia. We can't let those jerks get away! Don't worry. The Matra have started screening suspicious persons, and we've already arrested many of Suraj's associates. This was likely one factor that caused the Hive's consciousness to waver. Everything went as you predicted, All Haytham. Good. <laughs> Seems like the interesting part is already over. I'll leave the arrests to you all. See you. And off he goes! <sighs> there still are a lot of test subjects here, so let's stick around for a while. Oh no. Oh no. I was involved in all these plans to get rid of the acting Grand Sage? What came over me? How could I do something like this? We were accomplices without knowing it. But I'm afraid that Alhatha might pressure the Matra into giving us heavier sentences. Whether he's the scribe or the acting Grand Sage, we can't afford to offend him. It seems our future at the Academia will be full of uncertainties. We can discuss the future later. Leaving the Collective left me with a strange sense of guilt. I didn't feel anything towards Alhatham at first since he wasn't well known. All the opinions I heard about him were negative, though. Siraj made us hate Al Haytham, and we blindly accepted that hatred and thought of him as a bad person. From how things look, we've done a lot of irrational things. I guess we're getting what we deserve. Uh, could you help us apologize to Al Haytham? Sure! Papa will help you tell Al Haytham, but... Whether he chooses to forgive you is up to him. It's okay. No matter what he chooses, apologizing will make us feel slightly better. If he chooses to remember this, we're prepared for our punishment. It's time to go. <sighs> Let's go. So, were they all doomed? We can ask all Haytham about that later. Looks like I can't exist as Siraj number 36. Yet, my life as Ilyas goes on. When I was at Gundarvaville, I thought about whether I should just come forward with the truth. But I didn't have the courage then. So in the end, I lost my sense of justice, but I also wasn't able to conform. Ilyas? Don't be sad. I'm the one who deceived you. However, I didn't come out of this completely empty-handed. The moment the hive collapsed, an idea popped into my head. I realized that the collective I was always trying to fit into wasn't as powerful as I had imagined. Understanding that gave me courage somehow. Perhaps one day, I could be just like all Haytham, and not care about what anyone else thinks. You can do it. Paimon believes in you. <laughs> Thanks. Well, 
I should get going. I'm one of the primary suspects in the case, so I'll have to receive my due punishment. Can you keep this a secret from my parents and my sister? I just don't want them to worry. Also, please apologize to all Haytham for me. Goodbye, you two. All the test subjects have been taken away. I'll have my subordinates seal the place, retrieve all documentation, and destroy the system. Are you too hurt? I brought bandages and hemostatics. Hyman's fine. <sighs> Just a little tired. Get some rest. Oh, Haytham is probably waiting for you at the entrance. Go see him when you're done here. Watch out for any of Siraj's associates who might still be in hiding. If you encounter anything you can't take care of, come find me at the Academia. Okay, you stay safe too, Sino. Let's go meet up with Al Haytham. The matter's settled. We can return now. <laughs> I actually thought it would have been settled sooner. This took much longer than I expected. Judging by your faces, it seems like you two still have some questions. I respect your curiosity, but I'm off the clock now, so I'm not going to field any questions. Hey! We're not your colleagues! Um... You couldn't tell that was an excuse just now? until you explain what happened back at Siraj's secret base! See ya. Ah, hold it right there! Are you done? Your behavior is reminding me of some other people. Stop changing the subject! It's too much of a hassle to explain everything from the top. You know what? Come with me. Uh, uh, where to? You'll know when we get there. Is this... your home? Yes. <laughs> What's with you all of a sudden? Being all polite and inviting us over? Ah, you're back. Quick, come help me see if this painting's all straightened. Uh, and... Huh? Who are they? Stop making a fuss. They're obviously guests. You're... not from the Academia, are you? I'm unsure she's seen you before. <gasps> you're the person from that time in that one place! Wait, what? How do you know me? Oh no, oh no, do people know that I live here? What? You're embarrassed only now of all times? Oh, you guys are roommates! Yes, yes we are, but keep that to yourselves. Please, don't tell anyone else. I keep a few books on collectives and the subconscious here at home. I'll get them. You all chat in the meantime. Hey! You're leaving just like that? What's the deal, I'll hate them? Uh. <laughs> uh. Sorry, I know we've only just met, but I have to ask. Are you, um. You wouldn't happen to be actors that I'll hate them hire to pretend to be his friends, would you? Uh. What? Guess not. I've never seen him invite friends home before, so please excuse my surprise. You guys get it, right? You know, with his temperament and stuff. But... 
Aren't you his friend? Uh, I wouldn't say friends exactly. Okay, well, we used to be. But we're not anymore. Huh? Don't worry about it. My name is Kaveh. I'm sorry to have met you under these circumstances. Anyway, please don't say anything about me living here. You seem like you got a lot going on. So maybe some more will make Paimon shut up. Are you serious? How could you... Oh, of course. You're all Haytham's friends. What? That was a normal response. You exposed your own weakness. Still, why do you have to treat me like he does? Judging by the deafening din coming from the living room, you all must be getting along quite well. Hmm. Entertain your own friends, why don't you? I'll leave the books here. Paimon's dizzy from reading. This is way too complicated. Why don't we just ask questions instead? Paimon wants to know... Uh, oh, how did you know about the collective consciousness's weakness? A year ago, Siraj presented his thesis to the Grand Sage, who offhandedly asked for my opinion. I actually responded with two lines of reasoning. The first, as I've already said, was that his research was on human evolution, a subject prohibited by the academia. The second was that I thought the direction of his research was too extreme, but his approach too conservative. Wait, that's too conservative? He built such a large lab, gathered all those people, and even tried to get rid of you! One way to stabilize a collective consciousness is to remove the test subject's humanity altogether. The optimal solution to achieve collective consciousness is to focus solely on the overmind and treat the other test subjects as tools. That's way too dangerous! You're not seriously considering that, are you? Cause, uh... Whew. I'm merely stating the facts. If Siraj had done that, I would have felt his work to be just as senseless. It's impossible for any species to evolve overnight, and humans without their humanity cannot be called humans. That's why the academia prohibited research into human evolution. Most research of this kind tends to run contrary to evolution. Huh. Paimon gets it now. Ha! <laughs> That's rich coming from you. If humans aren't humans without their humanity, then you'll probably evolve into some other species in another decade, I wager. What about you? Are you going to devolve into a fungus? At least I'd be a fungus with empathy. Sorry for eavesdropping, but what happened to you guys? Are you in trouble? Sort of. We encountered a strange researcher that had it out for us. Are you all okay? Huh. So that's how things went. Ah, <sighs> such is life. If only he'd known, Alhatham could have stayed indoors today, and the whole thing could have been avoided, right? Plus, he could have helped me with the housework for once. See those books? They've been sitting there waiting for someone to sort through them for an age. If you're not gonna read them, tidy them away! They don't belong there! Uh... Uh... <sighs> Can you feel the awkwardness in the air? I hope you're aware of your lack of conversational skills. Oh, so the pot's calling the kettle black, is he? Hmm. Well, having said all that, are you okay? I'm doing quite well. Much better than that painting you're trying to hang on the wall. You... You don't understand anything! Stop criticizing my taste in decoration! Paimon can't tell which of them is more problematic. <sighs> Let's just get this over with and leave. You whisper very loudly. Oh! Um... Yeah! Paimon's been told that. Do you have any more questions? Let Paimon think. Uh... Oh! By the way, the other researchers apologized to you. They hope that you can forgive them. I bear them no ill will. More accurately, I don't really care about what they think of me. To some extent, they were also fooled by Siraj. The Matra will take this into account at their trials. Ilias also said the 
that he wanted to tell us the truth at Gondarvaville, but he didn't have the courage. He apologized to you, too. It doesn't matter. I never considered asking him to come forward with the truth. Judging from his experiences, he's more courageous than the average person. There's no need to lay even more criticism on him. Criticizing the brave only shows how weak you yourself are. I'm going for dinner in 10 minutes, so I'll field one last question. Paimon doesn't have any more questions. How about you? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. You only started investigating with the Matra at the Academia because you were interested in something, right? But after meeting Siraj, it didn't seem like you were interested in him or his experiment. I had no interest in him personally, but I was curious as to why so many people were willing to form a collective consciousness with him. I now understand the reason. Correct. The fall of the sages and the shutdown of the Akasha terminals deeply affected the academia. The fact that Siraj's project attracted so much interest despite not being approved speaks to the lack of research projects as of late. As the acting Grand Sage, I'll have to figure something out. In addition, what happened to Ilias is worth our attention. Reporting academic fraud was the right thing to do. He didn't deserve the outcome that he had received. Paimon understands now. Oh, you're pretty serious when it comes to work, huh? I think minimum viable seriousness is a more apt description. I'll do my best to take care of this mess until my resignation is approved. Wait, your resignation? Yes. I've already submitted my resignation to the Academia. Soon, I'll resign as the Acting Grand Sage and go back to being its scribe. I don't think Siraj knew about that. If he had waited just a few more days before acting, I would have already resigned. What he'd do then wouldn't have been any concern of mine. However, even without my input, his unstable model would have collapsed for some other reason, so it makes no difference. But why do you want to resign? I'm not suited to be a sage, nor do I want to be one. The official process to select the new sages is already underway, but this process is long and takes far too much time. If I serve as acting Grand Sage for too long, the position might become permanent. That would be troublesome. This job isn't something I want to spend the rest of my life doing. It's important to keep your priorities straight. Well, it's about time. You two should grab some dinner as well. Oh, now that you say that, Paimon's kinda hungry. See ya! We're gonna grab some yummies! See ya. The name Siraj doesn't ring a bell. Was he in your class? He isn't someone who would leave an impression, so it's expected that you don't remember him. I've always had a hard time appreciating the way that the Academia pressures people by labeling them as geniuses. But even so, the Academia can't be left to you. Or perhaps I should say that I'm delighted to see that you have a base amount of self-awareness. If the people in the Academia haven't gone mad, they'd know that I'm much more suited to be a sage than you. And I suppose they'd let everyone know that your career as a sage will be as shaky as that painting. Again, that's mighty rich coming from someone about to resign. In a few days, you'll be managing files again. You'll be back at rock bottom. But my salary will likely stay the same. Wait, what? How come? Why do you get special treatment? At least I don't have to be an architectural designer who works himself to death just to get a smile from his client. Y you I took time out of my day to clean the living room for you, and this is the thanks I get for it? I'd have been better off catching up on my work! I still have designs to finish. Make sure to pay back the rent you owe me. I'm going to buy some furniture with that, Mora. What? Are you trying to annoy me to death? The decorations you buy keep getting uglier and uglier! 
What's the point of having a boring wood carving in your house? You'll have to blame that on my financial freedom. Fine! Go ahead and hide behind your financial success if you want. But if we forget Mora for a second, do you have anything of true value to boast about? I think I'd have too many choices, to be honest. You, on the other hand, can you think of any redeeming features at all? Artistry, for sure! You don't know the first thing about interior design. Don't go off buying random furniture unless you take me with you. So I'll have to bring you along and then buy you drinks? Of course! But why would I do that? It would just be another form of a loan, and you'd have to pay me back eventually. Can't you just be nice and not ask for the Mora back? Pretending that you're not in debt is as ridiculous as pretending you're not living in someone else's home. Word will get out sooner or later. Speaking of which, your friends won't say anything, right? Tell them to keep all this a secret. There's no need to hide it so carefully. I think the truth's already out. You're such a lightweight that a few drinks at the tavern had you spilling all your beans. What? No, it can't be.